Hello, hello. Hi everyone, welcome along. Hey Cecilia, <laughs> great to have you along as well. Um, and yeah, welcome along to another uh, Ski Sunday. This is number 25, uh, halfway through the year. Started doing this in the first week of January this year and uh, managed to keep it going and uh, really enjoying it. Hey Moda, great to have you along as well. Um, I'm gradually improving my setup. I've got two computers now with a, a capture card, so hopefully avoiding the overheating that I was getting and the, and the, uh, the kind of breakdowns um, of the computer. So yeah, cool. Um, yeah, it's been a very busy couple of weeks uh, around the release of my album. Um, lots of, sort of promotion stuff going on and uh, really happy to be getting a good... Uh, Hey, Scale, how are you doing? Um, yeah, getting a good uh, reaction to it. Um, and yeah, I feel like it's it's nice now to have kind of got it out and I can focus on some new stuff. I've got another album uh, for my other project, IOTA, I'm now going to start working on, um, which I kind of put on hold, actually, before I um, started kind of working on uh, short circuits. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to getting on with some new stuff. Um, and planning some new Ski Sundays as well. Uh, I know people have been sending in requests for tracks uh, to deconstruct. Um, there's bits of software I want to look at as well. Um, so yeah, lots to lots coming up. Um, but yeah, I want to dive into this one today. So this is, um, I'm going to be looking at this uh, relatively new plugin. It came out a month or so ago. Um, and it's, well, it's part of UVI's um, kind of portfolio of, of plugins that they've got. Um, you may have seen, if you've seen some of my previous streams, um, I'm a big fan, um, especially things like Sensations and the Emulator and the Fairlight, you know, some great sounds. Um, and they're a great company as well. And, you know, I think their their attention to detail is amazing. The, the quality of sounds as well, the support, everything is really great. So anyway, this came, this came out and it really caught my eye. Um, I'm a big fan of all things Roland anyway. And this was just nice because it was it it's it's kind of taking inspiration from um what's probably, you know, maybe maybe not so familiar, you know, a, a bit of hardware that's not not so familiar to people, and it's the uh MKS7, which was a rack mount unit. Um and essentially it was uh a TR707 drum machine. Uh, and a Juno 106 kind of all in one box. And it was divided up into bass, melody and synth or chords. Um, so I think that the bass had was one voice. The melody, I believe, was two voices. And then the, the chords or synth was three voices. Um, and so that's six. <laughs> and then you've got the 707, um, which is seven. So that's why it's a kind of seven voice um, box. And... I just did a little, very little bit of research. Apparently it was brought out for the kind of karaoke market uh, at the time and you could kind of load in uh, MIDI files into it and essentially kind of do karaoke with it, uh, which is cool. Um, hi, Davey Byrne. Great to have you along. Um, so, yeah, and it was uh, not very editable. I think there was some basic editing you could do just from the front panel, but as you can probably see, if I just try and sort of zoom in on that... Um, yeah, it's just kind of got a few buttons. Um, but you, I think the, the parameters were CC mapped. So, you you know, you could use editors with it, like a Juno 106 editor. Um, and in that way, you could kind of save the sounds as well. So what's really exciting is that UVI have gone through and they've sampled all the sounds, all the kind of waveforms, I imagine, um, and taken all the presets. And they've put this, put it into this lovely kind of interface uh, with obviously a lot more flexibility and for example whereas it was originally just the TR707 now they've included some of the other drum machines like the 808 and 909 so um, so that's really cool and obviously you've got a lot more voices to play with as well so yeah I just wanted to kind of have a play with it really and then uh, end up you know making some beats and some sounds um, so yeah cool oh yeah thank you <laughs> thanks for the uh the congratulations on the England game. Yeah, that was, uh, I think it's taking everyone by surprise, to be honest. You know, England are normally out, out at this point. But so to get through to uh, semi-finals is just, yeah, unbelievable. Um, yeah, I hope we go further. But 
good good fun good fun to uh, to watch cool so let's uh let's move over to ableton live uh if i can there we go great um so what i'm going to do is uh to start off with i'm just going to show kind of loading it up basically so i've got my plugins here and here's the uvi workstation i'm just going to drag it over and uh I know that uh, this runs in Falcon as well, which is which is UVI's kind of flagship synth, um, which I haven't got, and I'm well, I should get into it because apparently I think it runs within that. Um, but anyway, this this the actual um, kind of launcher or whatever you want to call it for for UVI plugins is here, and you have to double click there, and you can see these are the sound banks that I've got: dark like digital sensations, drumulation, emulation. Um, oh, there's a Falcon preset tour. That's interesting. I'll have a look at that at some point. Uh, <laughs> it's coming home. It's coming home. Um, so yeah, what we have here is uh, these are kind of all the presets it comes with, and they're nicely divided up into some great kind of genres: um, electronic pop, synthwave, future funk, modern disco, experimental techno house, um, and then some stack sounds as well, which uh, we'll look at because they're great. Um, and then you've got the individual instruments. But I think what we should do is just get, get straight into it and uh, let's just load up one. Let's just load up Techno House um, and we can actually sort of see what's going on with it. OK, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press a note. So what you can see... So it, what it's doing is it's it's it's, like it's um, essentially the multi instrument, and you can see that it's along the top here. It's divided up into rhythm, bass, melody, synth one, synth two, synth three. So instantly we've got more flexibility here with um, with what what you had on the original machine, um, and. On this main screen here, you can. This is where you can control the levels of the drums. So this is the kick here. Just take that down. And I love the lights as well. There, they just look so realistic. Yeah. Got the hi hat. So then along the top, the functions that it's got um, are you can either mute the voice, so the rhythm. There you go, taking it out. Or you can solo it. So we can do that to some of the other things. We've got the bass here, let's solo that. Nice one here. Um, and then, so you've got solo and mute, and then you've got the actual editing uh, button. So if you want to go in and, and edit the rhythm, for example, you just click on that, and then you've got the functionality. So um for each each of these kind of voices or, or sounds bass melody synth whatever you've got a uh, preset and uh sound selection and the preset basically saves the kit or the sound um plus any kind of modulation around it so um any of the kind of the levels or effects or whatever that might be might go into it so if i just solo this you can see that it's Interestingly, it's kind of saying 7909, but the kit is an 808. So if we wanted to change that to a 909, you can see them all here actually, or a 606, we can. CR78, this is a special Super 7 rhythm. And then you've also got these drum designers as well. So Cecilia, yet you can, um, you can actually map any of these controls uh, to a controller, and I'm going to look at that in a, uh, in a bit, actually, once I start actually kind of making some tracks with it. So not only that, but uh, obviously you can hear it's playing a, a rhythm. Um, now, these are all preset patterns, and at the moment it's on toolkit. So there's loads here. So say I wanted to do electro pop. You can just kind of scroll through all these. So you can essentially apply any MIDI pattern 
to any sound, which is really cool. Um, on each voice, uh, you've also got, you can adjust the decay. So say I wanted to adjust the decay on this kick drum, you can adjust that, filter. Um, and then there's also um, some effects sends, um, reverb and delay. So say if I wanted to add some reverb to that, I can, or the other reverb, or delay. And then these are kept, the sort of master controls are kept here. So you can see A, B, A, B there. So this is if you wanted to, you know, change the size or the time um, of, of these effects. So that's really nice. And then if you didn't want to use the patterns and you just wanted to play them, then you can just uh, click on this on note trigger and then they're all available to you here on the keyboard as well. Um, so you can just, so if you kind of, as you're scrolling through, you come, a one that, come across one that you really like and you just think, okay, well I actually want to kind of make that into a beat, then you can. Um, if we put that back on, and say you do really like that as a starting point, um, you can also then drag over the MIDI uh, onto a clip. There we go. Um, and you can see, let's just close that now. Oops. And then play that. Ah, and you know what I need to do is I need to take the on note off. There we go. So that's really nice. Let's fold that. We've got the MIDI, so that's super cool. Um, so we can then manipulate that. So that's the drums. Um, I'm going to delete that now and let's just to kind of head back over to the interface. Um, so just to answer your question actually, uh, Cecilia, about mapping. So say we wanted to map this controller. Now I thought this in, I can't say what this is, what is, what this is like in Logic because I'm Logic or any, any other door, but um, normally in Ableton Live, if you want to map anything, it's really easy because you just have to go to configure and then you just click on the knob or parameter of on the plugin and it instantly kind of recognizes it. However, um, I think because there are so many parameters, it's kind of impossible to do it. So I'm assuming anyway. Um, so what you have to do is you have to right click on it and then you can just select your CC that you want. So I've selected CC20, for example. And then I think you then you have to select host automation. So let's close that now. And if I then click on this, there you go. It's then recognized it. And then if I wanted to uh, play this now, and I wanted to adjust the level there we go so that's how you do it um, cool so Davy Byrne um, so all the MIDI patterns are loaded on super and you can drag them out into drum pack yes exactly so any of them uh, it's super cool so let's yeah let's try another one let's try drum designer and let's try uh, modern disco. Let's try disco funk. Loving that. So all you do is you just take that over, drag it into a clip, make sure the note on, on note trigger is off and we can go here. There we go. And then we can adjust the tempo. Quite a new order, isn't it?
yeah, I mean, it just as a as a kind of resource, you know, for ideas and things. That and the thing is, they actually sound really good as well. I'm I'm really impressed with the actual sounds of the drum kits. I mean, I'm sure we've all got 808s and 909s and and all those kind of sounds um, in the doors. You know, they normally kind of come uh, come in the drum rack or whatever. So it's just it's just refreshing sometimes to have um, you know a different kind of palette of sounds. Um, so anyway, that's that. Uh, so if we now go uh, off onto the bass, for example, um, and let's just put this note on trigger again, because I'm soloing this at the moment. If I take that off solo, see we've got everything else coming coming in again. Um, so say we want to look at the bass. So so we're onto the bass here. So this is monophonic, as I mentioned, and. Um, so you've got the, the sort of parameters that you've got here uh, are the, you can set the preset. And as I said before, this will change the, any kind of modulation um, settings you've got. Like the, it's got drive here, phaser, EQ, and reverb sends and delay sends. Um, but then you can actually then change the actual waveform. So say for example, we want to change it to reso bass. And this is a similar thing. So this has got an arpeggiator. So these aren't MIDI files as such. This is an arpeggiator. So I don't know. I don't think you can drag the MIDI over from this. Um, but you know, obviously you don't have to have that on. So you can just play that just as a, as a normal sound. And then we can we can just scroll through these. Uh, let's try some really nice kind of subby bass sounds. Uh, let's just turn it up a little bit. And let's get one that maybe we can demonstrate some. Okay. So got cut off resonance. Um, you can select the velocity, the depth as well the depth of this uh, filter envelope. So kind of a lot of, lot of flexibility there. Then you've got the amp envelope as well. We've actually got poly here. So you can actually make the bass polyphonic. Not that you really want to, but you never know, you might find a sound. And then you've got the reverb. Um, and then, yeah, this, this arpeggiator here. So loads of uh, presets. So let's try Purple City. So I won't go too much into detail of the arpeggiator. But essentially, you've got um, a kind of chord follow here, classic, got up and down. So the chord follow would basically follow the notes you're, you're playing uh, on the keyboard. Um, so yeah, really cool. Uh, that's the bass. And let's just uh, quickly go through some of the other ones. Uh, take that off solo. So we've got the melody here. Oops. So this is, I got the arpeggiator on at the moment. Turn the volume up a little bit. Let's try cheesy piano bass it. Oh, that's beautiful already. So there's obviously a lot of effect on that. Let's take the delay sends off. I like that. So kind of similar thing, you've got drive. Let's try the phaser on this. Hey Shlo, how you doing? Good to have you along. And anyone else that might have joined. Yeah, we're looking at this UVI Super 7, just running through the kind of functionality, and then I'm gonna try making some Beats with it, some sounds and uh, some tracks. 
So yeah, this is really nice. Um, what? Oh yeah, you've got another function here actually, which is different to the bass. It's you can select normal, which is just playing the one voice, or chorus, which I believe plays the th the same thing but with three voices. So the same sound. And then you've got this one, which adds some noise to it. Okay, and finally we got the synth. So let's have a look at this. Whee. Okay, let's turn it up. So this has got the arpeggiator on it. Let's turn that off. And this has got a sound on it that said, says substack one. So let's try something completely different. Let's try brassy mellow. Oh yes. So you can hear. I mean, sorry, it's a bit loud, isn't it? It's distorting a bit. Um, I don't know if how this compares really to you know an actual soft synth that is kind of using code to you know create these waveforms and the sounds as opposed to samples. This is essentially like a rompler. Love that word. It, it does sound so fat. Um, good word. Okay, uh, what else have we got? Let's try some pads. Always love a pad. A deep bed. Uh, let's try some weight synths. So obviously very kind of 80s. That is what the, you know, the the, that era of Roland synths were, you know, kind of very, very 80s sounding, but, you know, a really good palette here um, to work from. And I do like anything that creates some sort of boundaries, um, which is really nice. You know, it's like, I love the idea of like, okay, well, I'm just going to work with this, just these sounds and see what I can come, kind of come up with. And um, then if I want to take it further, further down the line, I can. So really nice. So uh, now, so this is great, and this is you know I could I could use this as a way to kind of get ideas together, or or even even just use the kind of presets that it comes with, because there are loads here. You know, if I just go to Ambient Cloud and try some of this, it's it resets it all, and it's this one finger kind of idea. But what it doesn't allow me to do is to kind of start using these indiv individual sounds like the rhythm, bass, melody, uh, and kind of record them individually. Uh, it's th this kind of particular setup is for just kind of having, literally being able to play, play a note or a few notes and kind of have an instant track. Um, I would say what this is really good for is just like, oh, you know, getting an idea of like, oh, I really like the, the drums in this, or I really like the synth part in that. I want to take that sound and I'm going to use it for one of my tracks. I think that's where it's really good. And it's, it's kind of nice to hear something in, in context. And they must have spent so long putting these together. I mean, there you go, you know, that bass. Killer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the way that if you did want to use these sounds and build up parts, build up a track with more with more flexibility, being able to create your own MIDI parts, how we can do that. Before I do that, though, um, I just want to look at the stacked sounds because I saw a video of a guy that I think worked on these. And um, if I just load one of these up, so this is slightly different. So this isn't kind of like creating grooves as such. This is actually uh, stacking some of these synths up together. So you can hear 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 that the hear hear you can hear that the rhythm and the melody is muted. So we've got bass and three of the synths. So let's just go through some of these.
Cecilia. Let's have a look um, at how much it is. $79. So when it came out, it was, I think, like they did some sort of half price deal, but um, $79. <laughs> So we could just program something in. Um, let's just use that, I really like that. Um. Just turn this metronome up a little bit. Cool. Put quantize on. the MIDI there but you know just an example of some of the sounds and how you can record it so that's that and I'm going to park that uh, there now um, if I just create another instrument track and click on this again double click it go to super 7 you can see here the last menu item is single instruments and this is uh, where you've got those individual kind of sections of the instrument, but uh, having them kind of set out individually. So say, for example, we, we just load up drums. Here, you've got just the drums on, them, on their own. So you can't see that kind of panel at the top. So if I take off the note on trigger, we've got them all here. And we can manipulate these. So um, I'm going to delete that. And what I've done is I've actually prepared something where um, I've set up a group in Ableton Live. And <clears throat> I've just, on each track, I've put that individual instrument. So we can select them from here, from push. Um, then we've got bass. Then we've got melody. And then we've got another one. It sounds very similar, doesn't it? That's the synth. So all of these are just the individual uh, instruments. So that just means that we can actually, um, you know, put down a beat, put down a bass line, put down some synth, put down some whatever. And we can, you know, if we, if we need more of those, we can always duplicate them. So we could, I could just duplicate another drum track and then we've got them. And just looking at the CPU, I was kind of expecting that it was gonna use, be using up a lot of CPU, but it doesn't seem to be, uh, which, is, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I just thought, well, let's give it a go. Let's try something out um, and not using the patterns, but actually just program some, some parts ourselves. So uh, let's choose a kit. Uh, let's go to maybe one of the drum designers. What's this one like? It's quite nice. Uh, so yeah, let's put in a beat. Obviously we've got the metronome here. Cool, so this is the, using the Drum Designer 3, um, which is one of the uh, kit selections it comes with. So yeah, let's put something in. Here we go. That's a bit weird there, let's just... Uh, Take 
that one out. Move that kick over there. Oh, I don't like that last bit there. Maybe we can try the repeat on here. off. What else have we got? Let me try something on the offbeat, quite nice. Take the second one of those out. So you notice I'm not, these aren't in a drum rack, so I'm having to use the, uh, the, the scale function here just in chromatic because that just kind of gives me these sounds. So we could, in fact, let's duplicate that part and then add a, add a snare to this. Or maybe, maybe a clap actually. So that clap's a bit quiet. So let's just go in here and make it a bit louder. There we go. take off the delay on that. The con what the conga's like. Maybe we can duplicate that, put that onto another part. Add a bit of conga. Okay, cool. So I've got three parts there. Um, um, and I won't get too much into kind of mixing now. Um, uh, clave, clav pattern. Um, ooh, let's see, is that, was there a clav there? Could be good. Uh, Oh, cowbell. Everyone needs more cowbell. So that can be part of all the new percussion that comes in on that part. Okay, so we've got some we've got some drums there. Um, I was going to say that I wasn't going to wasn't going to put any effects on it, but hey, let's try some drum bus just to fatten up a little bit. It's a bit loud in it now. Let's turn it down. With, without. Take off the damping. Maybe increase the transients.
Okay, so we've got a drum pattern. Uh, let's just save that so we don't lose it. Uh, hey, DK. Um, yeah, good sound. It's, it is really good sound. I do like it. Um, cool, let's go to synth uh, and see what we've got on here. Uh, so that, we don't want that. I'm thinking it's kind of got a bit of an Afro beaty kind of vibe. So I wonder if there is um, that kind of RMI type electric piano sound. Uh, that could be quite good. Uh, so let's go to see what we've got here. Um, synth, some nice synth, plucks, organ, um, pads. Misc keys. Here we go. Let's just have a little, little look through these. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Let's just take off. That's kind of. In fact, let's just keep looking through. Oh, we've got some Rhodes ones here. I'm doing this. Although actually, no, you can you can kind of see on that keyboard, can't you? I was going to bring up the um, virtual MIDI keyboard. Um, I'm going to make a few adjustments to this. I'm just going to make the. It's just the reverb's a bit intense, isn't it? Put that in, quite like that. Okay, just kind of the chords wise, I'm just doing, I'm in C minor here. Um, in fact, let me just bring up the uh, the MPK, um, where is it? Audio music, the MPK, there we go, the classic. So, yeah, so C minor, so C minor 9, A minor 9, uh, A flat major 7, F minor 9, A major 7, G minor 9. Cool, so. So it might be quite nice trying a bass line uh, under that. I'll just copy those parts there. We can try some effects on it later. Um, so yeah, Davy Byrne, I'm playing in C minor, um, but I'm kind of I'm I'm shifting around a little bit. So, uh, oops, let's go back on here. There you go. So yeah, C minor, but then I'm kind of going for the second chord, I'm going out of that to A minor. If I 
very temporarily, but then using that as a way to go down to A flat minor, so A flat major. Is kind of related, but um, it's well, it would be the uh, sixth chord of C minor, um, and then to uh, F minor, which again that's the four chord of C minor, back up to the sixth chord, and then for the five chord, which is this G, I'm putting in this A again. Um, So that you'd find that A in the Dorian in C Dorian. So I, I use that a lot in kind of chord sequences. Um, just that. That's it. Nice sound. Uh, okay, so let's try a bass line on this. Uh, so we've got another instance of our UVI, and yeah, this is the bass section. Let's just uh, hide that. I'm I'm hearing some kind of quite kind of subby saw type sound for this. Uh, so let's see what we've got. A whole bunch of sounds. So wave saw saw square. Just just playing with the depth here. Because I don't want the so that 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 envelope um, ADSR. Filter envelope is now not affecting when it's in, when it's at naught. It's not. And the more you put it up, and then you've got the main filtering there as well. Sounds pretty fat. A bit of reverb on it maybe. And then you've got the actual amp. Is there an octave on that as well? Uh, maybe not. Okay, let's just take the release down. Okay, it's a bit loud as well, isn't it? So let's just go to the mix here, turn it down. So what we really want to be doing here is uh, Kind of move, trying to trying to come up with a bass line that's going to be kind of reinforcing those chords with the bass with the root notes. So C, A, A flat, F, G. So. Something like that. I'll, I'll I'll jam something down and get the best bit. We could 
try it with some of the other patterns maybe. Okay, quite like that. Um, maybe we can now try the melody part and see if we can put something on that. So um, I think for the time being, I'll duplicate that bass line down to all of those sections, uh, all those scenes. Um, and then, yeah, let's just try uh, something on the melody. Uh, so what could we do here? Um, oh, so let's, try some, let's try some kind of pluck. Turn down a bit. jazzy um i'm gonna put that down anyway just as an idea oh actually before i do that uh i'm gonna take off the quantize because it's not gonna capture me going that bit there uh, let's see if we can just get rid of that <laughs> oh um, god let's have a look it's the MIDI control isn't it it's the modulation uh, let's get rid of it that bit there Get rid of that note as well. Just unmute that for the moment. That's also a bit rushed, so let's just shift that over. Still a bit rushed. Right, uh, let's just make that a four bar loop. And I think there's one more part we can put in. Something a bit kind of funky. Something like a kind of guitar. Just gonna have a little sip of Mugi Cha. It's quite hot in here. Um, hi everyone that's out there. Um, <clears throat> hope you're enjoying this. Um, look at the UVI Super 7. Um, I'm gonna try a another track in a minute. I'm just gonna finish off this one. Um, so I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, oh, not do that. I'm gonna duplicate that track, take out the MIDI part and find another sound. And what I want is some kind of pluck sound, but that's more, yeah, synth guitar maybe. Take off the reverb. Turn off a bit. There we go. Maybe we can try the phaser on this. Oh yeah, love that. OK, 
Okay. Um, oh, because it's melody, it's it's mon it's monophonic, isn't it? Um, but it doesn't matter. It'll just make me do something kind of monophonic. Okay. Uh, let's duplicate that down there and then uh, delete it from there. Let's put that in. Um, uh, I think I'll quantize it this time. Of course, I could use Ableton effects here. Okay, let's duplicate that down there. Um, what I'm going to do is take this scene here, duplicate that last one, take the drums out, and then we can have... Um, yeah, so Celia, nice, uh, nice to have a glide function. Yeah, it's true. Um, let me just double check. Uh, let's just create another part there and go into here. Um, doesn't seem like there is one, does it? Uh, no. I suppose you you would just if I if I just get a kind of lead standard lead sound. Hmm, something to look into. I uh, maybe it's something they can just kind of add. You know, I mean, obviously you can. Have a look at the preferences. Um, yeah. Hmm. Doesn't seem like there is. Never mind. Cool. Uh, I'm going to make a, a techno tune. I think that's the next one to do. So I'm going to save this here. Uh, that's my that's my idea. First idea. And yeah, let's uh, yeah let's save that. And what I've got is. Uh, maybe I should just yeah save this as an idea. I'm gonna see. Yeah, so that's saved, and I'm gonna save a a new one. Let's call this uh, idea two, and and I can leave that one as it is. Uh, if I go to current project, I I can just drag in. Uh, the kind of what where I started the last time, so I'm going to delete that now. Uh, and here we should have drums. Okay, so let's try something completely different. Um, I'm gonna maybe make it a bit faster, but let's go to some other sounds here. So, so we've got 707. Let's just have a quick listen to the other drum designers. 
sounds very very kind of princey. Oh, I love those sounds, they're great, aren't they? Um, let's go 707. Maybe not. Let's go 909. <laughs> techno for tea time, yes. Let's go techno, okay, cool. Um, metronome on, quantize on. We wanna go a little bit faster, don't we? Off a bit. Maybe take some of that delay off. Okay, what else have we got? Okay, maybe that's a good starting point. So let's duplicate that pattern. And then we can add this. Okay, so this could this could be fun if I um I wonder if I can yeah maybe maybe I can kind of map this. Okay, yeah, let's 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 do that in a minute. Um well actually maybe I can maybe I can do that now. So let's uh do what we did before with this tom and we can we can we can kind of map that pitch and we can actually create a part out of that pitch. So uh, let's do it to 20 again and host automation one, close, uh, press configure and then click on that. Yep, it's recognized it. Hey, Davey Byrne. Okay, no worries. Wow, you're in Australia. Amazing. Um, yeah, it will be, it will be, um, archived on my twitch channel and uh, and also on youtube as well so watch your back and uh, thanks so much for for being here and uh yeah all the best and uh, hopefully catch you very soon cool so i'm going to uh now group that and uh we can uh, go here and uh, let's just oops there we go map it let's go back to the device okay great Let's 
just um, set the parameters here for the mapping. Uh, so we want to we want this to kind of start at fifty. I think that should will that work? Let's see. Um, Hmm. Um, oh, well, well, we we'll leave it like that for the moment. Okay, so let's just... Oh, no, that's worked. Okay, so let's record that in with that part live. Get my moogie chat out of the way. Yeah, that's worked. Great. And we should be able to actually see that. There we go. There's the automation. Okay, so we've got two parts. That's good for the moment. So let's go to uh, straight over to the synth. I think that's a good uh, place to go. And let's get something that's um, oops, going to work with that. Mix down. Uh, okay, let's keep on that. Let's go to MKS Pluck One. Keys, uh, synth. I reckon we need synth. Let me. Uh... Okay, so let's take off some of this. Let's see if we can kind of manipulate this. That's more like it. Okay, it's turned up a bit now. with the filter. Increasing some of that reverb. Turn it down a bit. So let's try let's try doing some more mapping here. Uh, so let's go to the synth um, and do the same thing. So we want to go to the cutoff. We want to give it let's give it 21 CC 21 this time, and let's go to host automation two. It may be that um, for it, it, this is only applicable to it. Probably it's probably only applicable to 
per instance of the device, but I just want to be sure that it's not going to interfere with that uh, other automation I set up or the mapping that I set up. So configure, yep, cut off, that's worked, great. So I now can manipulate it from there, that's good. Um, so then I just want to group it. I'm going to turn the macros on. Uh, let's just map it to macro one. There we go. Go back to device. There we go. won't kind of record that automation in um, just hear what it sounds like with the other part drum part I don't really like that I don't really like that now the uh, the tom that I put in so I'm going to take it I'm just going to mute it I think uh, yeah after all that Maybe we can try something else over the top. Okay. Um, let's try a bass line. Um, we could just go for a classic sort of offbeat bass line, maybe. Uh, but let's try. Mega sub basic. I mean, that is um, definitely the sound of the MKS. Really subby and bass, bassy. A little melody uh, while we're here. So, okay. actually, that could be quite fun. Actually, let's let's try um, using the arpeggiator because we haven't done that yet. Uh, turn it down.
that down to the next scene, take that off, and then and then here, and let's just add one more part to the drums. part I'm going to take that out um, it was fun using the arpeggiator but I always think that you can have more oh. it's better playing something in possible be a bit because it's monophonic when it kind of catches it when the notes are too long it cuts off the what we can do now is we can go to the device triggering that uh, oh I know why I'm doing the wrong thing so what I wanted to do was just mute those drums um, yeah so oh, Cecilia uh, how do you come up with melodies um, I don't know. I just kind of improvise, really. Uh, I think the key thing is just to kind of know what key signature you're in and what notes you've got available to you. Um, so in this case, uh, just with that part that I came up with, and I'll just... Uh, so... So... So in this particular case, the, the chords that I'm playing are, why can I never hear these things? Uh, maybe, oh. ah, because it's soloed. <laughs> All over the place. Um, so we're in F minor here. So when you're in F minor, um, a really good starting point uh, for melodies are just thinking about the, f the one, the four and the five. So, so just kind of, even if you're just using those kind of notes, you know that they're going to work. Uh, even even if, the ch if the chords are changing. Uh, so what was, it, what was the part that I used there? It was like... So I'm using that note as well, the G, which slightly goes against what I was just saying there. Um, but fundamentally, I'm starting on the five, on, which is the C. Of, I'm just kind of adding that in, just because it sounds quite nice. And just 
coming up with a rhythm, really. I mean, I don't think it's a particularly good, <laughs> good melody, but it kind of, you know, it, it serves a purpose. I mean, it's, it's almost like not, not, I don't really even think of it as a melody. It's more just a, a kind of arpeggiated part um, to, that's just a bit more, I think the, I, lo I love arpeggiators and I use them a lot, but you, they don't give you much variation. And I, and I do like the idea of being able to vary the part that you're creating. Um, so anyway, that is the UVI Super 7. Uh, I think it's great. And I haven't used any other sounds uh, for the two kind of ideas that I tried. Um, and there's just a lot you can do with it. You know, I think the fact it's got built in effects. It, let me just play this again. I mean, CPU for this, uh, it's kind of going to about 30, 35, which is um, it's not bad. Um, bearing in mind, I've got four instances of, of the UVI Super 7, so not bad at all, really. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you very much, everyone, uh, for watching. And yeah, uh, if you haven't already, please join the Discord um, because that's where uh, you can kind of post idea. We can communicate during the week, and um, so that's. If you, if you subscribe, you can get access to the sub channel as well, which is where I upload projects, um, things I've been working on. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, you can do requests as well. Um, but yeah, happy Sunday, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, enjoy the football if you're into football. If you're not, enjoy not watching it. And uh, I'll catch you very soon. Take care, everyone. See you later. Bye.